Hi again. Okay, now we're going to talk about quantifiers. This is the second last bit of logical structure you're going to get uh, in this class. We have one more thing after that, and then you've got all of the new symbols. Okay, there's going to be a special predicate. We'll talk about that later. This is the uh, the headline news for FOL quantifiers. Okay, so I said last time, sometimes you can have a complete sentence in FOL where you don't have any names. You're always going to have a predicate. A predicate is like a sentence except it's got gaps in it that want to be filled by a name. One way to make a complete sentence is to fill the gap. Put a name in and then you wind up saying something about the individual that you've named. Uh, but we can have complete sentences, things that can be true or false, where there's no names. What effectively happens is we'll say something about the gap. I won't fill it, but I'll say, you can fill it. Or I'll say, any way you fill this, you'll get something true. Okay, let's see an example. So here's a sentence. Everyone is present. This is, so if we exa examine this in terms of English grammar, this is another subject predicate sentence. The subject is everyone, the predicate is present. Subject, who are we talking about? We're talking about everyone. What are we saying about them, the predicate? We're saying they're present. But in FOL, we say everyone, that's not a name. That doesn't refer to any specific individual. So. I say the following would be a bad symbolization in FOL. If I wrote this as PE with this symbolization, PX stands for X is present, that part's fine. As a predicate, PX says X is present, that's fine. But E as a name for everyone, that's no good. That doesn't refer to any specific individual or even any specific group. The sentence doesn't say there's a certain person or a certain group of people named everyone who's present. It would be better to say this is saying something like, no matter which person you take, that person is present. So if I'm uh, teaching a class and you know I'm waiting for everybody to arrive before we start, I don't do that. Sometimes people don't come to my classes, but if we have a meeting that's going to start, right? I need everybody on the committee to be there before we get going. I might say everyone's present. I might say that in multiple different meetings where I'm expecting different groups of people. And I'm saying the same thing in each case. What I'm saying is everyone who counts is here. I'm not talking about a specific group of people and saying that they have some property. I'm saying of every individual I care about, of each of those people, they all have a certain property. So I'm going to say, the way we think of this sentence in FOL, it doesn't say there's a certain person named everyone who's present or a certain group of people. It says something more like this. It says, for any person you think of, that person is present. So in FOL, we're going to have a special symbol that says, look at the predicate that's about to come after this symbol. Look at its gaps. No matter what name you put in the gap, you'll get a true sentence. And the symbol is an upside down A. Okay, so if I write something like upside down A, and then a variable, and then a predicate that has that variable in it, what I'm effectively saying here is that no matter what you put in the gap I've labeled with that variable in the sentence that follows, you'll get a true sentence. So when I write this thing, which we read out loud as for all x, vx, that's the title of your textbook, for all x, for all x, px, where px means x is present, what I'm saying there is Oops, there it is. For any object, any individual, any person, for any object, if you put a name of that object in place of the x in px, the result will be true. No matter how you fill this, this, 
this gap. No matter how you fill this gap, you'll get something true. Okay. This couple of symbols here, the upside down A, we call that a quantifier. Um, I'm going to give you a second quantifier in a sentence. There are two quantifiers in our language. This one we call the universal quantifier because it's saying something universal about everybody in the universe. No matter which person from anywhere in the universe you take, put a name of them in this gap I'm talking about, you'll get something true. Okay. Here's the other quantifier. We call it an existential quantifier. Here's an example of a sentence with it. Take a sentence like, somebody farted. Again, somebody that looks like a grammatical subject, but it's not a logical subject. It's not picking out a specific thing. If I know somebody farted, I may not know who did it. Here's how we symbolize it in FOL. We use a backwards E. The backwards E we call an existential quantifier. If you want to read the sentence out loud, you'd say, there exists an X such that FX, symbolization key, FX stands for X farted. This is another quantifier. Again, we call it the existential quantifier. Because it's saying there exists, there is at least one person such that if you put a name of them in the x gap, you get a true sentence. So think of exists x, fx, as saying there is an object, and again, I'm using the object to mean individual, person, thing, what, whatever kind of thing it is that names can name. There is an object such that if you put a name of that object in place of the x gap in fx, the result will be a true sentence. So there's somebody such that it's true that they farted, that that person farted. So Obama farted. If that's true, we're done. Roger farted. Um, George farted. Secretariat farted. This sentence exists x, fx. So that's telling you at least one of those things is true. Okay. Now, Here's why it's useful for us to think the way FOL has us think about those sentences. Why shouldn't we just think of somebody and everybody as subjects, as names? Because when we combine quantifiers with the connectives we had in TFL, we become able to see the structure of sentences like this one that connect two different predicates. So instead of taking all mammals here in the sentence, all mammals are one-blooded. Instead of taking that as a name, as a subject, I can see this as a sentence that connects the predicate x is a mammal with the, with the predicate x is warm-blooded. Here's how we would symbolize this in TFL, or sorry, in FOL. We would say, for all x, if x is a mammal, then x is warm-blooded. So this sentence says, no matter what object you take, because it's a universal quantifier, no matter what object you take, if you put a name of that object in the x gap, in the thing that comes after me, which is this sentence in brackets, you'll get a true sentence. No matter what object you take, if you put a name of that in the x gap. Now notice there are two gaps here with the same label. There's a pattern of repetition. Remember, that's one of the key things logical structure is about. Pattern of repetition here, we see the same label on these two gaps. That means they have to get the same name. I can fill the gap with whatever name I want as long as I put the same name in this first x and in this second x. Just to reiterate something that we've seen before, like when we were talking about rules, how to read rules for natural deduction, when you see the same letter repeated, the same variable letter repeated, that means you have to put the same thing in both gaps. But when you see different letters, if I had an X and a Y, that doesn't mean you have to put different names. It means you're allowed to. So if I had X and Y, you're allowed to have you're allowed to substitute, say, Obama in both cases, but you are allowed to put Obama in one and Cameron in the other. When you have X occurring twice, like here, you have to put the same name in both places. So this sentence tells me that a bunch of different sentences are true. 
So here we have m x arrow w x. The universal quantifier on the front tells me no matter what I put in the x gaps, I get a true sentence. So m o arrow w o, that's got to be true. If Obama is a mammal, then Obama is warm-blooded. But also, if Cameron is a mammal, then Cameron is warm-blooded. If Secretariat is a mammal, then Secretariat is warm-blooded. If Roger is a mammal, then Roger is warm-blooded. Anything you put in that gap. If this, then, sorry, if this part, then this part. Think about the truth table for arrow. Um, this video is getting a bit long, so I'm not going to go through this. But I said in the beginning when we were learning the truth table for arrow, and the reason why we were reading it as if then, I said, hold, just hold on. I will tell you about the reason why that's the truth table for if then when we get to FOL. This is basically it. I think the normal English sentence, all mammals are warm blooded, says the same thing as the normal English sentence. If it's a mammal, then it's warm-blooded. Okay, but if you want to have that equivalence and you want to say all mammals are warm-blooded, we're symbolized as for all x, mx. If mx, then wx. You want to have the truth table that we had. Think about that for yourself. We'll talk about it in another video if you like. I'm going to stop there.